Produced by the Division of Instructional Television, Maryland State Department of Education, in cooperation with the Division of Instruction. Hi there, I'm Moy. Did you ever wonder what science is? Well, for one thing, science is fun. And I'll prove it to you if you visit my home at the Maryland Science Center. It's that big brick building that looks like a fort at Baltimore's Inner Harbor. The Maryland Science Center is a great place to visit. It's loaded with plenty of exhibits and displays that show how much fun science can be. Okay, don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. How about the Chesapeake Bay exhibit? Look out! That looks like the monster that devoured Annapolis. No, that's a giant mob of the Chesapeake Bay blue crab. If you think that was big, you should have seen the one that got away. These are more like it. Here are some real blue crabs, just like the ones in the bay. Here are some other creatures that live in the bay, too. Something's called plankton. Whatever they are. Plankton are small plants and animals, and some larger fish feed on them. But most plankton are too small to see without a microscope. Now, why don't you go into the city exhibit? 1,342, 1,343, 1,000... What are you doing? Counting dots. Counting dots? Yeah, it says here there are two million dots on this screen, one for each person in the Baltimore area, and I'm just checking. Well, how about checking yourself on the Baltimore City quiz machine? Okay. How many walk to work? 52,630. Wrong. Try again. 30,200? All right! <laughs> The slideshow on the history of Baltimore may have some more answers for you. Each neighborhood has its individual character and expresses itself as a community through its civic associations. And don't forget our movie classic about evolution. You know, the survival of the fittest. Gee, why well, that screen must be ten feet tall. You get to work with computers. This one's about nutrition. The directions come on the screen, and then you use a special code to type in all the foods you've eaten today. Don't forget that big piece of cake you had. <laughs> now it tells you what foods you need to have a well-balanced diet. Wow, that's too too many chocolate milkshakes for me. <laughs> with this computer, you can be an astronaut. I'm trying to land on the moon. Look out, I'm firing my rockets. Whoosh! Not enough. One more time. Whoosh! Oh no! I'm buried 11 feet deep in cream cheese. <laughs> Your turn. Well, now that I've got you interested in space, I suggest you take a soft landing in our Davis Planetarium. When the lights go out in there, the stars come out to play, and you can enjoy about 30 minutes in the heavens. And we even have the Boyd Theater, where all kinds of fantastic demonstrations take place. Terrific. You see, the ball was able to land back in the chimney because it was going with the same horizontal motion as the train. Yep, this is me up here helping one of our science specialists do an experiment with acids and bases. Thank you very much, Mort. It's been my pleasure. Now, certain chemicals indicate the presence of other chemicals by changing color. 
I have one of these chemicals here. It's called Universal Indicator. And if I add it to just some ordinary tap water, you can see that it, it turns green. Now, if I were to add another chemical to this, it would change color. Now, what I'm going to do is add some shampoo, which contains a number of chemicals. And it's when it's put in the solution, the solution immediately turns red to indicate to me that this shampoo actually contains some acid. No, this isn't the birth of Frankenstein's monster. This is a demonstration on high voltage electricity. It's just part of the other experiment that you and I get to take part in. What you just saw was 90,000 volts of electricity coming from this Tesla coil. It's a machine invented by a man named Nikola Tesla back in the late 1800s. Did you ever hear of inertia and friction? No, it's not a new TV series. It's just one of the many demonstrations on stage that you can watch and participate in. You are about to see an application of Sir Isaac Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia. Part of that law of inertia says that a body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside unbalanced force. Now, when I pull the tablecloth from beneath the cups and saucers, the only force that will be acting on them is the force of friction. And that force in this case is very small because everything on the table is very smooth. You ready for this, Mort? Uh-oh. Good luck. <laughs> and if you guess Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you're wrong again. It's Jack Frost mouthwash. Or at least it's cold enough to be. This is our demonstration on super cold liquids and gases. When I hold this balloon in a super cold liquid nitrogen, the air molecules inside lose their heat energy. They slow down, they take up a lot less room. When I take the balloon and hold it in the room, the molecules regain their heat energy, they move around faster, and they fill the balloon. We give you an idea of how your brain works in a special handwriting demonstration. And now I'll change hands and write your name backwards with my left hand. R A. C-H-E-L. Now we'll turn the board over and compare the two writings, and they should be pretty much identical. Hey, this room is filled with optical illusions that play tricks on your eyes. Now, before you go, don't forget to look in the other exhibits. That prove, you guessed it, science is fun. See ya! by the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting.